Hi everyone, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and if you're new to my channel, um, I garden here in the UK in South Buckinghamshire and it's equivalent to a zone 8B. I keep wanting to say 8A but our zones have changed so we're more of a zone 8B. Um, so we have a wonderful um, walled English cottage country garden here and my husband and I um, tend to it on our own. So today is just a vlog showing you the kind of things that we're up to at the moment. Um, we are still digging dahlias and um, putting them into storage so I'll show you a bit of that and if you've missed the detailed videos about how to or whether to dig and store your dahlias um, do watch the previous two videos on my channel because I cover that in a lot of detail and I'm just not going to go into that detail today. I'm just going to show you the tidying up things that we're doing in the garden. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear up all the leaves on the patio here from our Acer Grissom. Now I love this tree so much. I love the colour in the autumn. I love the bark throughout the year and it's just glorious. But we have a very, very um, pale white stone patio and the leaves when they fall make marks on the patio. So we do try to clear them up at least once a week, um, even though I think they look quite pretty, but they just create such a mess on the patio that we have to go around afterwards and uh, clean the patio once all the leaves have fallen. But that's fine. That's just part of what we have to put up with having this gorgeous, gorgeous tree here. So I'm going to clear up the leaves and then I'm going to show you um, where we have our leaf mulch and what we do with the leaf mulch. So I'll talk a bit more about that after we've um uh, after I've cleared up all the leaves, um, we also have some leaves underneath um, our, our flowering cherry tree that I want to collect up as well. So this is just me tidying up in the garden.
You're possibly wondering why I haven't raked up all the leaves under the base of the tree and that is because we have this sort of circular border here where we planted a load of things earlier this year so it's actually a, a prepared bed um, and it's really good to leave your leaves on the border if you want to and you don't mind a little bit of mess because what happens over the winter is the worms will drag those leaves down into the soil and they will create um, a wonderful sort of leaf mould with them. They will uh, disintegrate or decompose and they will add good structure and loads of microorganisms to the soil. Um, so that's why I've left this area um, because I'm happy for the worms to drag those down. The reason I've raked up the rest is not to protect the lawn because it's not a lawn but because I want to create leaf mulch because leaf mulch has all these benefits and it's great as a mulch to put on the borders. It's also really good for sowing seeds because it's not nutrient dense and it has this really lovely crumbly texture. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go over to the compost area of our garden and I'm really not sure that I've ever shown this before um, but I'm going to be really brave today and show you this area. It's very messy, very unstructured, very haphazard, but that the compost area is where we also put all the leaves in the autumn to create the leaf mulch that we um, add to our borders. So let's go and have a look at that area. Please, please be kind. So we're over here by the compost bins. I've got three bays of compost of varying degrees. This one's got weeds in it. Um, as in the weeds are growing. <laughs> um, this one here is leaf mulch and it's leaf mulch from last year. Um, it does actually have some new leaf leaves that have fallen on it this year but um, at the bottom it's all the leaf mulch from last year and then this builder's sack here um, are the leaves that we've collected already this year and I'm just going to add um, the ones from this bag into this bag. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to add the ones that I've collected today into the yellow bag and then when we're mulching the borders I will be using the leaf mulch that's here that's decomposed for a year and then once we've used that we can put this yellow bag into it. I mean ideally I just need another bay here but we haven't got around to making it. We've already got four bays um, but anyway this is what we're doing um, so I'm just going to add it. So we will normally fill up two big builder sacks like this, um, at least two each year with all the leaves that fall in our garden. We've got loads of trees from neighbours that overhang our walls. Um, and then this is the leaf mulch that has been created over the year. So this is the leaf mould that is at the bottom this is what all the worms have created and it's absolutely glorious stuff. thing I'm doing today is filling up the bird feeders. Now it is important to clean out your bird feeders um, just to make sure that they don't have any sort of 
bugs and viruses in them. Um, but once they, you've cleaned them out, you can hang them up. Uh, mine are a little bit rusty, but I don't think the birds will mind. Um, and then um, put some food in. Now, the food that I like to put in particularly are um, little mealworms. They're like dried worms. And um, the robins in particular like to feed on flat surfaces. So it's important to have sort of open feeders like this so that robins can sort of um, peck at the food um, when it's on the ground. Um, and the other thing that we do is I also use peanuts. Now um, I have done a lot of research about peanuts because um, many people don't like to feed birds peanuts but actually as long as the peanuts are in a container that's got small enough holes where they can only um, peck at the peanuts and not get a whole peanut out then they're not likely to choke on them because they're only able to get a small bit. So um, the cages are the best thing to put peanuts nuts in and not to put them on flat surfaces because that way a small bird could easily choke on a peanut. The other thing I found really useful are um, sort of cages that you can put around the smaller feeders so that the small birds get a chance because otherwise I find that the pigeons and magpies and crows um, come and get all the food and the smaller birds don't have a chance. So on some of the feeders I've put um, wire cages around them because that stops the bigger birds being able to get in. So in case you're wondering what those are that's for that reason but I don't put it on all of them. Um, I like sort of little open ones like this because then any bird who wants it um, can have some. So something else that I really want to do today whilst we're digging up the dahlias um, is I want to dig up this Cephalaria gigantea which is um, giant scabious. It's absolutely gorgeous. It gets to about eight foot tall in my garden um, and it's amazing. It's really wafty and sort of sways around. You've got these gorgeous sort of little um, buttery yellow uh, scabious flowers that sway around. The bees absolutely love it. But these, uh, this clump here, there's about three plants here and they are planted really close to a Viburnum opulus, which I'm trying to grow into a substantial shrub. And I really feel like um, they're just much too close. So I'm going to dig them out excuse the plane that's flying above. So I'm going to dig these out today and actually I'm going to compost these because I've got so many giant scabies in the garden. I don't need these. I may need to get Richard's help because I know that they've got a really deep root. So I'm going to try and tackle these and see how we do. are absolutely huge. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them out myself. So it has got an absolutely enormous taproot. Um, this is the taproot here and I've actually broken it off. So I haven't managed to get the whole thing out myself and I'm going to go and grab Richard. Um, he's got a bigger spade and he's stronger than me, so I'm going to get him to help. because this viburnum here is just going to be able to breathe. Those um, cephalaria were just so close. Uh, it wasn't getting a chance to sort of spread in that direction. So I think it's going to be a much happier bush shrub, 
and we should get a better shape out of it next season. So we're down at the bottom of the grass border and we're just going to dig out some of the dahlias here before it gets too dark. We just need to do a little bit um, each day we come out into the garden just to uh, get all 360 dahlias out of the ground. So we're trying to tackle it bit by bit so that it's not such a lab laborious job. If you're interested in more detail about whether you should dig dahlias or how to dig them and store them, then do look at the videos that I've just posted onto my YouTube channel because I go into a lot of information there to help you make a decision about whether to dig and store them yourself or whether you can just leave them in the ground. fun with us as we tidied up a bit in the garden and tackled a couple of autumnal jobs. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.